Okay. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, how can the righteous stand? The problem with Christians living under pressure is all based on the wrong foundation, the wrong teaching from the initial stage of our Christian life. <laughs> if we pastors and teachers are teaching our people, not making them to understand that it is not by might, it is not by power, but by His grace, then they will tend to exercise more power, more work in trying to satisfy or please God, more than how to trust God himself for even their success. So because of the wrong teaching from the beginning of our Christian life, we notice that we are finding it difficult to actually walk a Christian walk. Second, the teachers and preachers set high standard of expectation without encouraging members to depend on the Holy Spirit or God for success. So many a time you see us being afraid or trying to live up to the expectation of our pastor <clears throat> so that pastor can not say we have failed. So we are mostly trying to please our pastors rather than trying to please God. And struggle to please men and not even trying to please God. That's some of the reasons Christians are living under pressure. But we say, what are some hindrances? Some of the hindrances we realize is not depending on God for of God or by His grace, not depending on the grace of God. We should know that it's not by power, it's not by might. Mm -hmm. If we depend on God, those obstacles, those trials that come our way can easily be overcome. Not taking the passenger seats as children of God and allowing God to draft for us. Many a time you notice that we Christians, instead of us taking the passenger seat, we want to do the driving for ourselves, leaving God out. But it's only God that knows our destiny. He knows everything. He knows where we are heading. So if we give him chance to drive the car of life, the boat of life for us, and we just relax in the passenger seat, we can rest assured that we will not have pressure in the Christian walk. Not trusting God with our problem. Many at times God told us not to worry about tomorrow. But some of us are already worrying about things for next year. So instead of taking, knowing that God will take care of tomorrow, but we should only focus on today, we take today's problem, tomorrow's problem, and even next one problem, we put it on our head. That weighs us down. That hinder our work with God. In Jesus' name. Amen. So we say, how to overcome them? By fully trusting in God. We need to trust in God. Hallelujah. Amen. If we fully trust in God, the grace is sufficient. We can make it. But we need to know that we can only make it by His grace and trust Him. In Jesus' name. And then we said, how to change our mentality? This mentality we have. We can change our mentality by knowing that our God is the God of love and not the God of condemnation. Many a time we condemn ourselves. We don't see the way God is seen. We have to look at things the way God looks at things. God is always looking at things positively and while we are condemning even each other. So if we can start to appreciate God as the lover, God is love and not God is a condemner, then we will tend to achieve more in Jesus' name. Amen. Lastly, how the people, how can the people talk more with the word of grace? They can talk more with the word of grace by appreciating themselves and also knowing that God appreciates us for every little thing that we do. If we get to understand that every little success in the kingdom, every little step that we take to please God, to please men, God appreciates us. Then we can start to talk more by the word of grace instead of the word of condemnation. Okay, thank you. Now, let me, thank you, thank you. I want to say this, please be brief. Don't go through everything. We go through everything, we have no time. Just to the point that is most important. Now, the point I want to say again. The point is, 
how sometimes live under the law, we have self-condemnation and expectation and pressure and give people pressure. And, and then how we can live under grace and say that God is pleased whenever we do anything for God, so we're not under pressure. So that's the main point. Uh, it's how to live under the grace and not the law and how important it is. So be very brief and simple. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay, maybe it's easier to put it. For you it's hard. Okay, okay. Okay, like this. Yep, it's sideways. Amen. You hold it. Okay. Okay, we said that the question was why is it that Christians uh, just some are living the on oppression? Now, the, listen, listen. I want you to just respond to one point. Don't yes. go through all points. Yes. One point. Choose one point you want to respond to in your group. Okay. We said that it's because of our environment. As Christians, our upbringing are some of the reasons we are living under pressure. We see our family or our parents are not showing love. We found out that our parents or our father or mother, our mother is so abusive to our, to the, to our husband. For that reason, when a child grows up, even if she's in the church, she's born again. But she has that mind that my mother was never loving to her, to her husband, so I will do the same. That's why you see that we are living under pressure today. You find that the husband is always beating on his wife. It's because of the environment where we find ourselves, that's why you see people are doing things the way they are doing it. Sometimes we believe that we come to, to Christ, those things that we did in the past, we cannot be forgiven. God can forgive us. These are the reasons we are living under pressure, even if the pastor preach or the people come and teach, because we have not yet changed our mentality. We have not yet changed our mind. We still live the way we are doing things, amen? amen. And the nice thing is that we found out because of the financial difficulties we find ourselves in nowadays. You see that things are not working the way it should work. You find out that school fees, your children's school, your children out of school, your rent need to be paid, and things are not going the way it should go. We are still living under pressure. That's why we are preaching the word of God. That's why we are believers. We are living under this pressure because of the environment, the circumstances we find ourselves in. Then that will come back to the remedy. The only way we can do that if we change our mind, because the Bible says, if you are, you are, you are a new creature, everything, all things have become new, right? Amen. So if we change our mindset, then of course we come back to know that indeed we need to be the way God wants us to be. If we can change our mindset, if we can know that indeed God is the source of our life, if we can change our mind to know that God is our provider, if we can change our mindset to know that indeed God is loving and caring, amen. amen. Then of course our things that we need to do will do away with the pressure and we begin to love and we begin to respect one another as a church or member in the church, we begin to respect each other. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, she's very practical. Talk about how it was in the family yes. and how it was changed. So, so that's very practical. We want to be practical. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm Minister Ibrahim for the Grace and Truth National International Ministry. Hallelujah. Briefly, I'll be speaking how can we live in grace. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of St. John, chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus says, If ye abound in me, and I will abound in you. First then, he says that I am the tree, and my father is the vain dresser. He says that if any branches that is full within me, that don't bear any food, he says that my father, he caught us all. So the only way that you and I can live in grace, until we abound in the Lord. And the Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18, he says, come not and let us reason together. Hallelujah. He said, though your sin may be blood as a scarlet, hallelujah. And he said, and then your way will be right as a root. He says that he, God, I'm going to beautify your love. I'm going to make it to shine white as a snow. Hallelujah. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse, verse 13 says, Come and let us hear the conclusion of this whole matter. 
He said, fear the Lord and keep his commandment. The reason why many of us, we are far away from grace today, is that we don't fear God. No. That's the point there. No. I don't say we don't fear God. We honor God. Honor God and respect God, but we are not afraid of God now. Be very clear. Fear God in the Bible doesn't mean I'm afraid of Him, but means I honor Him, I respect Him, I obey Him. So we do fear God in a biblical sense. We honor Him, we respect Him, we obey Him. Uh, but we are not afraid of Him and stay away from Him. Okay. Hallelujah. And Paul also said, and please be brief, everyone, one or two minutes. One or two minutes. Okay. Paul also said, what shall we do then? Shall we continue in sin so that grace now, be about? Uh, we would like you to share from the discussion instead of giving new teaching. Don't, 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 don't be preaching. Okay, in Jesus' name. So the only way that we can abound on the grace until we abound in the Lord, in Jesus' name. Okay, thank you. So, respond to the teaching as it is, and do not add any more. And two minutes each person. Okay. Thank you. Two minutes. Amen. My name is Prophet Eric Say and Flomo. Please speak. My name is Prophet Eric Say and Flomo for the Consuming Fire Theater Ministry. My name is Prophet Eric Say and Flomo from the Consuming Fire Theater Ministry. Okay, the question was that, why are so many Christians living under pressure and anger? From my perspective, when I come to home, it's because we don't appreciate little things. To increase them down because we do not depend on God. We don't depend on God. So not to live under pressure and anger, we must have absolute dependency on God. Not taking God's responsibility as our responsibility. That's it. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, I'm Minister Ade Ross from the Great Commission Worldwide Ministry. Send closer to the camera. The reason why we live under pressure as Christians, because when you receive Christ, you should have that inner joy at all times. So his grace can rest upon you. So whatever letter that you are going through or whatever work that you are doing for our Lord, once you have an inner joy doing our work, you will find things going smoothly with you. And once you have faith, because when you have faith, God's grace is resting upon you. And to overcome such is God's grace in your life. Everything you are doing, God is first. Believe that there is a God because when you are relating to your God, like when you are singing and worshiping and praising your God, that inner joy that comes to you is the one that's supposed to remain in you to do the work of God. Amen. And once you have already received Christ as your personal Savior, because when you receive him as your personal Savior, that inner joy that comes, then that's something common. It's something that you... You, you always feel because when you got some little thing to do, even for the husband, even if it's not appreciated, you should appreciate what you are doing for him. You should appreciate and ask God's grace to intervene that your child will not go against you when you are talking for the wrong. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to say something. Thank you. I want to say something in the language. When we say we should be joyful, that is the law. Yeah. Now what I mean is like this, we have to do something, do this, obey this, that is the law. Now it's not wrong. The law is not wrong, but motivated by the grace of God. So when I tell people to rejoice in the Lord, I don't say, you should be joyful. Now let me say, if you think, if I say to you, you should be joyful, does it give you motivation to rejoice or does it give you some pressure? You have to rejoice, you should rejoice. The way I say it is like this. God is happy with us. God looks at us all the time. Now notice my language is always start with God. God looks at us. He cares about us. He serves us. And He wants to give us joy. In God there is an abundance of joy. The moment we come to Him. Now instead of saying you should come to Him. I say the moment we come to Him, His joy will come. 
the more open we are to God, the more His joy will come. Have you noticed the difference? I start with God first. God is a joyful God. He's full of joy. Any moment we come to Him, we can be filled with joy. Have you noticed this language difference? It starts with the grace of God and never responds. So everyone, now, do you all just want to share to you over there? Or just this one standing? Okay, try to be brief. Thank you. Thank you. Praise Hallelujah. Oh, uh, I think the question was raised. Why Christians living under pressure? And what is the solution to that? My group, we came out with greed. You will live on a greed. 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 Greediness. Greediness. When you are greedy, you will always be under pressure. When you are impatient and selfish, you will always be under pressure. So the solution to those problems is one, we need to be prayerful. You got to put everything to God in prayers and everything will be done for you. Even Paul said it, in everything, he said we should say praise to God and the strength will come. There our strength lies. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Now, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, again, notice the language. I hope you don't mind. I hope you don't mind. Yeah. It's saying greed is a problem, so you have to do this. The moment you have to do this is the law. I'm saying God is good. God looks at us. He wants to bless us. He wants to serve us. And he has all kinds of blessings. So the more we come to him, the more joy we have. And we know everything I do for God, God is happy. So I can relax and I can, whatever I do, I'm happy with that. See, notice how I first talk about the grace of God and then I respond. And I try not to say, you should, you have to. Now, I say that too, but not too often. And I don't use that to motivate people. And I'll just say this. God is all this blessing. The moment we pray to Him, we'll receive power. Have you noticed the difference in this? So try to change the wording also. Okay. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Preacher uh, man, I want to say this to you. I'm closer to the camera. The problem is funnels in this nation. Funnels. And I am a pastor wife and a man of God and wife. I may not have the grace or the love of God to remain serving. I will see myself going out there. So this is for us in this Africa, Liberia, this nation. If a man is not working, you see the woman leaving to go out. They will not have love for the church. They take the grace of God. So it's for us. There are many of our husbands, they are pastors, they are not working. And the church for now is not sufficient. To send children to school. What do you do next? You see the woman getting out there because the love of God is not in her. So it's found us in this nation, like Europe, Africa. Thank you. So do, are you telling me a problem? You telling me a problem? It's a problem in the in the in the ministry. Okay. Now I can see that she's sharing a different problem. <laughs> now I want to say is who is the source of income? God. Now, I want to say this. Yes, it's true. We all suffer because of finance. But the way to receive more financial support from God is to know that. God says in the Bible, Jesus said in the Bible, look at the sparrow. Look at the, the lily. God provides for them. So you are much more precious than the sparrow. So when we trust in God, He will open the way when we train our people to trust in God and manage our life and manage our money and manage you know, the church in a way that we have a close relationship with God. The blessings of God will come more. Let me tell you, it is expensive for me to go to different countries. But God opened a way to provide for me. Actually, to come to this country costs two times or three times more, two times the amount I spend in other countries. 
and uh, but still God provides for me. But what I'm saying is, when we really follow God, He can provide. But it takes time to build up that reliance on God yes. and and just relax in God. Thank you. Uh, come close, please. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. Okay. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, this is goodness. This please, is speak by the way of introduction. please speak loudly. Please um, speak loudly. Please speak loudly. Sister Witness, it gets in the by the way of introduction. And the topic was raised on why many Christians are living in pressure. As for me or what my group has gathered, many people are living in pressure because they are not abiding by the demands of God. Many of us, we are in the church because of self. We are not in the church because we want to serve God, but because of self. Because we look at the pastors, we look at the deacons. If I don't go to church today, my pastor will talk. If I don't go to church today, my pastor will beat me. And if you are doing that, I'm sorry for you. The kingdom of God is not for you. If we try to drop self, the attitude of self, and serve God, that pressure will leave us. We'll always be happy when we are coming in the presence of God. We'll always feel joyful when we are because God is spirit. And when you are coming in his presence, you have to put all the things of all yourself, you have to put it down and serve him in spirit and in truth. That's the only way you can seek God. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope you don't mind. I say this when she said, when you want these blessings of God, you have to do this. You notice that? Law. Yeah, there's law and also it's like exchange. But what I say is, God has, now can you say this with me? God has all these blessings ready for us. Say it together. God has all these blessings ready for us. God wants to bless us. Any moment we trust in Him, and pray to Him, and love Him, and obey and serve Him, God is very happy, and He will bless us. So I can relax in God. God has provision ready for me. God wants to bless all of us. Have you noticed this difference? Now I hope all day long you say, God has a wonderful plan for my life. Everyone will say, God has a wonderful plan in my life. God wants to do great things in my life. And God will bless me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. In Jesus' name. Amen. By the way of introductions, I'm Charles Yehuda Brandelt, World Liberation Ministry International. The question says, why are people under pressure? In Jesus' name. People, especially Christians, are under pressure because they are self-centered in God's serving. They deny Christ and yes, they claim that they are serving God. Praise hallelujah. Amen. And the Bible says that he that deny Christ definitely you are on your own in Jesus' name. Amen. And for this reason, whenever you are a servant of God, whether you have or not, seek the face of God. Because all riches belong to him. Don't follow the world, but rather follow the Bible in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, seek first the kingdom of God and all its righteousness. All other things shall be added unto you. So if you put God's first, definitely pressure will depart from you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I, I want to say, it's saying, we seek God first, we do this first, and then God will bless us. It's reversing it. It's saying, God loves us. God cares about us. Say it. God cares about us. God wants to bless us. The moment we trust in Him, the blessings will come. When we don't trust in God, it will block the blessings of God. But when we trust in God, God is very happy. Now, notice this. I always start with the blessings of God to motivate people. Always start with the blessings of God, the grace of God to motivate people. It's 
not easy to change. Hallelujah. Anyway, study before you have Pastor Landers from the Victoria Faith Ministry. Okay. Amen. A question was asked. Why are so many people living on oppression? In my group, we summarize that in one word, which is love. Amen. Amen. There was a man who went to Jesus, or teachers of the Lord who asked Jesus, which commandment is the greatest? And Jesus told him, he said, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. Hallelujah. Amen. And Jesus gave a wonderful response again in St. John 6, verse 17. He said, Have I not chosen the twelve, and one of you is a demon or the devil? But yet and still, this devil that Jesus talked about, he was still with him. He was still eating with him at the table. Amen. So we said, because of the lack of love, so many people are under pressure. We should know that love is a command and love is a commitment. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, thank you. Now, the Bible, would everyone come over here? Is, is, there, uh, is there a way? Uh, maybe sit in the front and uh, if you don't mind. And, uh, um, Okay, now, let me say this. Everyone, please look at me. Uh -huh. Because I'm standing on this side, so please come over this side. Please sit over this side. Find a place. Yeah, yeah right. Thank you. Thank you. There are still some chairs inside here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. I do say much or little. I do say much that I stop this. This is this is life progress. Uh -huh. Say it again. Okay, okay, okay. So Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think um, you all know me. Amen. Amen. Is your innocent? First of all, my answer comes Humble yourself before the Lord He will lead you up Praise the Lord Amen. Now, when we read through John 1.12 The Bible declared to us As many as received Him To them He gave the power To become the sons of God When you receive Christ as personal Lord and Savior the love of Jesus will enter into you. Now, in anything you do, you will begin to see, begin to experience the love and happiness inside you. Now, life may be difficult, but it's not difficult for God. Sometimes we might find ourselves into sin, but for the Father, that He loved us, and we have that relationship with Him. No matter how little, he will still serve us. He will still supply our needs. But the point is this. I can say that in us, we have never devoted to serve God. No devotion. Because when you realize that somebody died for you and loves you, also you have to have a way of submitting yourself Humble personality. Whether you pour your old, you humble it, allow God to bring blessing on your way. Because as we are having the teaching, he said, even when we sin against him, he loves us. Even when we make mistakes, he's ready to bless us because he has already established a love for us. And that love made him that he can never forsake us. And if God cannot forsake us, what shall we do? To make sure that shame will never come upon our way. Because when shame comes to me, it comes to my God. Hallelujah. And therefore, we can overcome stress. Failure is not of God. 
Amen. Amen. And when we come into God, in Matthew 7, 7, he said, Knock to the door of God. He will open the door. Ask him. Seek. You will find. But many of us will fail to seek from God. Many of us are prayerless. To achieve anything in life, you know that principalities and powers are waging war against the kingdom of God. You got to make sure you put out of those boundaries. But when you come as just a man to serve God, we may not receive something from God in that manner. We must humble ourselves. And also, He gives us the strength to overcome all those circumstances. And when those circumstances are being uprooted on our ways, the ways are blessed ways. The ways are true. Amen. Amen. Let, let me say, for instance, now we are here praying for Him to come to Liberia for the first time. Along the line, he decided why was coming. You check in his paper. There's a mistake an unbeliever can do that will stop you not to enter into that building because of the name that was in the ticket was not the name in the passport. But he sent a message. Bishop, you are continuing to pray because I don't think I will enter into that building. This is a temptation. These are trials. So everything says you know that temptation trial will come on your way. You should know that hardship will come on your way. And remember, this thing started with Jesus. He suffered and suffered pain before he was glorified. And if we are not ready to submit so that we can become, we can overcome those trials of temptation, we can never be good Christians. And when we prayed, in that prayers, I tell you the gospel truth. When he passed to, I think as a black also, the wife sent me a message, Bishop, Thank God, they bonded him into that period. I was so happy. Amen. Amen. And we are praying that we need him to be here. And God looking at our faith, no matter how little it is, he said, no, this man will surely be here because of all of us today. And God brought him here. Even by the work of the Lord, even by the work of Satan, they will detect that fault in that people. And they will stop him. Because you are taking it a different name. And your passport is a different name. Even this made me, I got to go inside the airport, inside. Talk with the immigration, the chief operation officer, they carry me inside. In case they want to delay, but God smoothly, because of his love, because of the care he has for Liberia, nothing was wrong. He entered it. What am I saying? Brethren, most of you, Having problems in your marriages, you are the cause. You know God. Most of you have a problem in your ministry. You know God. You are the cause. Because if you can understand that, nothing moves smoothly. You invite Jesus in it. And when you invite Jesus in it, you come down yourself, allow him to do the work. Allow him to move the pressure. Because the pressure there is a spiritual pressure. It's a spirit of hindrances. This thing causes a lot of problems. But when you feel that you can carry it by yourself, that is where you can meet a lot of failures in marriage, failure in the family, failure in anything you do. But when it's inside, all things are possible. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop. Okay, now I, I want to explain this again. When we say love, it doesn't is not necessary uh, grace. When we say God loves us, that is grace. When we say the commandment, earlier someone said that, we love God, we should love God, that is the law. The law. What we do That's is the law. law. Now, what I want to say is everyone have this mentality. God, now everyone say with me, God is watching over me now. God is watching over me now. God has a wonderful plan in my life. God wants to bless our life. He wants to do great things in my life. The moment I repent of my sins and trust in Him and obey and serve Him, He is very happy. And He will bless me and strengthen me. So, you notice that the way I motivate people and myself is always saying, God is loving me, God is caring for me. 
then I don't just say, you should do this, you should do that. It's many people change Christianity into biblical teachings like you need obey, so you have to repent. Repent and obey. It's this kind of sermon you probably have heard a lot of times. Repent and obey and do this and do this and preach the gospel and pray more and read the Bible. So it's just telling people to do this, do this. Now, this is correct. It's the law of God. The law is in the Bible. The law is in the Bible. The law is correct. But God always motivates us to obey the law by the grace of God. Yes. That the Bible is full of words to say that God we love because God first loves us. We love because God first loves us. And God has a wonderful plan in our life. And God will provide for us. So every day when you wake up, you say, God is blessing me.